So today I'm going to be talking about troubleshooting your Corsair RGB lighting controllers. And in this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about what to do if your controller is not being detected within the Corsair IQ software or Windows for that matter. Now, step number one, we'll just get right to it. If you haven't done so already, make sure you are on the latest version of Corsair IQ. You want to be on version four. Uh, one of the problems I had with the Core XT was I was on version three and it took me a little bit to realize that I did not have the latest version. So just as a generic rule of thumb with Corsair, make sure you're on the latest version of IQ and make sure it's up to date. If you need to, go ahead and uninstall the old version, reboot your PC, download the latest version from Corsair, install it, and then go to the software update button and make sure that it's on the latest version. That's a good first step. At that point, you might even choose to go ahead and just reseat your controller, you know, the SATA power in the USB, uh, reboot it a second time, and then see if it's fixed. That might be all you need to get it going. It's not possible in a single video like this to go over every possible scenario uh, into which these controllers can fail. Hopefully this will just be a good guide to get you going down and get you thinking about what you can and can't do. Now, the first thing I'm gonna ask is, is this the first time we're installing it? Has this ever worked, basically? You know, if this controller has been sitting here for six months and been working just fine, and then, you know, you got up yesterday morning, powered on the PC, and nothing's working, and it's not being detected, did we change anything? Were we working on something? Did we install some new software? It can be the most simple thing that might cause a problem with that. But if it was working and now it's not, just ask yourself that question. Was I doing anything? Did I open this up to check something out? You know, if you did and you did change something, can you remove that piece of software, that application? You know, if you were just in there and really didn't do anything, maybe just go revisit that area of your PC case and check your cabling connections. Maybe you bumped something loose. Now, if you didn't do anything and you weren't in there and you haven't touched it for two weeks and it just out of the blue stopped working, or if this is the first time you're installing this component and it's just not going, uh, let's go ahead and continue. So the first thing I would do to just start isolating this problem down is, uh, let's do the simple things. Let's shut down any uh, RGB controlling software. You know, if you've got open RGB or signal RGB, things like that, uh, just right click on them in your taskbar and shut those down so that they're not controlling anything. And then, you know, it, I would say at every step to double check and see what's going on. See if that's changed the situation. So the next place I would go is try to determine, does the device have good power to it? And so one of the ways we can kind of detect that are the fans running. If you've got just a PWM fan in here, that should be running under most circumstances unless you've kind of you know, turned it into an off state. You may also have some RGB lighting coming out of these, uh, depending on what the hardware mode, things like that was of it. So if you've got RGB lights uh, working on your fans or your strips or something like that, uh, or the fans are spinning, then you could assume that you have power to it. However, now that I've said all of that, one of the first steps would be try a different power connector. You never know when you might have a flaky power connection, something like that that's causing it to not be detected. So unplug it, plug it into a different power connector on your uh, power supply. It kind of goes without saying, but if you have like one controller that works and one controller that doesn't, maybe swap those two in the power connection. Does the problem follow the controller or does the problem swap? You know, if you're using a specific SATA power connection and a specific USB connection and you swap them and the problem goes you know with the controller then you know the controller might be bad but if it swaps the problem and now the, you have a problem on the new controller then you start suspecting either the USB port or the SATA power port. On that topic of discussion I would look in IQ you know especially if you have multiple controllers and find out does IQ recognize any of them That'll kind of give you an idea of what does it see, what doesn't it see. That might give you a clue as to which controller you can go to knowing that those ports actually work. That USB header is good, that power port is good, and so we can maybe utilize those to swap in this other controller that's not working and make sure that it works. So that brings us to the next thing is the USB connection. Uh, try a different USB connection. They, in some cases, you may not have any other USB headers. In that case, you'll have to kind of swap them around and do a little bit of troubleshooting there. Try a different USB connection and see if the problem uh, resolves itself. So even though IQ may not be detecting the controller, we do want to check device manager and see if it's registering a USB device is being plugged in. Uh, start by going there and look and see, do you have any USB devices that have an exclamation point? Now it may just show it as like a USB hub or something like that. It won't necessarily show it as a Commander Pro in there. 
But if there's a device that has an exclamation point, what I would recommend is just, you know, take a picture of that uh, and either unplug the device if you want to do it live. That should be okay with USB. Don't unplug power while the power is on. Uh, but probably for the safest way is go ahead and power down the PC, unplug the USB connection and power it back up and then see if that device goes away or if the number of device changes, you know, and then plug it back in, power it back up and see if that device returns with an exclamation point. That indicates there is some problem with the device. Now, it could still be the USB port that you're plugging into. It could be something on the cable. We still want to swap it around to different power ports, different USB ports. But go ahead and check that and see if Windows is detecting anything. So if at this point you've tried different power connections, different USB ports, nothing's working, maybe it's not being detected in Device Manager or it's being detected with an exclamation point indicating there's some problem, uh, I would recommend simplifying down your system just as much as possible, which means removing all USB devices if you can, uh, as much as possible, including up to, uh, you for some cooling components, you may need to switch those over just temporarily to your motherboard, like your AIO pump if needed, or a couple of fans just to keep it cool. And so, but if you can just strip it down as much as possible just to eliminate the possibility of any other device conflicting with this, that is what I would recommend you do. So after you've done that, you know, it's really just a matter of plugging this device in by itself. In fact, off of the controller, probably should do this earlier in your troubleshooting, remove all of the devices to this. So get all of the fans disconnected, all the RGB lighting. You know, if you're using a Commander Pro or a Core XT, remove any USB devices from this, any temperature probes, just unplug them. You really just want the device by itself. At this point, it's just simply, we just want IQ to detect this device, no matter how we get it done. And so just strip everything off of it and get this device detected if you can. So if you strip it down and no matter what you do, your controller will not be detected no matter what uh, power connection you use, no matter what USB connection you use, um, you know, and it won't either, either won't detect it in Windows or it detects it with a uh, exclamation point. You know, you're kind of getting deeper into what you need to do. So what I would do at that point, there have been some problems in the past with AMD motherboards and USB. So, you know, generally with PCs, you don't always want to just update your BIOS, but in this case, might be a good time to make sure that it's up to date. I would also make sure that your motherboard chipset drivers are up to date. If you haven't done that recently, go to your motherboard manufacturer's product page, you know, go download the chipset, make sure that's installed and up to date. After all of that, I would reboot it and reseat all of these connections just to get a good fresh uh, check on it and see if that does it. You might be using multiple controllers which I think deserves a special conversation here. Now, I've never had a problem using multiple controllers. I've done a video on it, on how to get it working, you know, if you need to do more than six fans. So again, it's never given me any trouble, but I've seen some comments and reports in the Corsair forums about this specifically being a problem. And one of the solutions that's presented to this is having some success, it looks like, is it maybe it's a power delivery unit on the USB bus, especially if you've got these daisy chained in some way. In that case, you can use an adapter cable to convert your USB 3.0 header into a 2.0 header. Now USB 3.0 has some uh, better and more efficient power delivery. And that's kind of the idea as to maybe why this works a little bit better. Again, I've never had a problem with this and I've never needed to do it, but uh, I did have one of these adapter cables laying around. I have checked it, it does work. They're detected just fine. And these cables, I'll link to these in the description below. There are probably other ones out there. And this only gives you just one USB 2.0 header to connect to, but it works great. So if you have multiple controllers and they're not being detected, this would be a solution I would consider. Is, I think this was like eight or nine or 10 bucks, something like that. It was relatively inexpensive. So another solution you might choose if you're having USB problems, including using multiple controllers, is to try using a powered USB hub. In fact, I think that's probably the better solution out of the two. Uh, if you don't happen to have that adapter cable laying around, uh, get a powered USB hub and give that a try. and might alleviate some certain problems. Uh, I've been using the one from NZXT for quite some time. And it works great. I really like the way the cables are laid out. It's got a magnetic attachment and it's given me no trouble at all. Corsair does make a, a USB hub as well. Uh, I expect it's going to work just the same. I haven't actually used it and I don't have one here today to show you, 
but uh, it's really essentially the same. It's just the layout of the cabling is different. I prefer the NZXT one personally over the Corsair one, but your build may differ. So take a look at both of them, see which one might work. If at this point it's still not working and you've really, you've stripped it down, you've tried a whole bunch of different ports, possibly the device is bad. Now you could argue that long before this, if, if you just went out to Best Buy, for example, or Amazon and bought this, maybe you just take it back and exchange it for another device because that is a good troubleshooting step is do you have another one there to test it with? This is why if you have multiple controllers, it can be really important and helpful that if you can plug into these USB ports and power connections to know that they're good. But you may just choose to return it at this point. I, I hate returning products, but there are times where it's just like, I kind of think this thing is bad. I'm going to take it back. Now, if you get the new one, and you come back and that one still has a problem, it's very unlikely both would be bad. Although over my many years of technical support, I've seen that on a couple of occasions. Or worse, something in your motherboard or power supply or power connection is damaging this product. I've seen that once or twice too, but that's very, very rare. I wouldn't uh, count on that. So anyways, but maybe try another controller if you can. Uh, on the flip side, if you have another PC or if you have a friend that has a PC and you can connect this in and install IQ and just check if it's uh, detected, that'll just help you to know if this controller is good and it's not something in your setup. In the instance where you've swapped it out with another device and it still is doing the same thing and it's not being detected, at that point, there's a couple of things you can do to start maybe troubleshooting the motherboard. Um, I would install uh, Wireshark personally. I don't know if you've ever played with that. That's kind of an advanced thing to do. Usually you do network captures with that, but it does have the ability to read the USB bus. It can be a little bit confusing into how it does it. And I'm not an expert on doing USB captures with Wireshark, but uh, it gives you four different options, at least on the PC I tested it with most recently. Uh, I had to choose a couple of those different USB buses to find uh, the correct one. But basically, once you plug this device in, now you would have to plug it in live. You couldn't do it offline. But you can plug it in live and you can see the actual traffic going back and forth on the USB bus. And you can get an idea if this device is being detected and what's going on. You should be able to see you know, the communication over this bus. Some of you might be more expert in that. And I'm going to continue playing around with it if you want to know more. But basically plug this in, you should see kind of a handshake with it and then some string exchanges. And embedded with that, you should get the type of device that's being plugged in. You'll actually see, you know, Corsair Commander Pro come across with that. If there were errors in that exchange, I would expect that you would see it. So at that point, you know, you might get an error that you could look at and, you know, maybe give you a clue, start, maybe you've got a motherboard problem, something else going on like that. You know, hopefully not. Those would be more rare things to see. Other thing I would do, um, it's at that point, maybe you're going to start, you know, doing some research, looking at forums, Google it, see if other people are having problems with this specific motherboard. If your motherboard's under warranty, you might check with the manufacturer. Now, this is where all plugging in other things to these USB ports are going to be kind of crucial. You know, just trying to eliminate everything down. If you're plugging in everything else and it works, but this device doesn't, uh, you might choose to contact Corsair as well. I've worked with their support. Uh, they're generally fairly decent to work with. They're not the most uh, quick to respond to you, but they usually they always will respond to me if I do that. If you go into IQ and you go into the settings, you can collect some debug logs there. I can find a little bit in the logs that's useful that tells me the device is uh, detected, but you can collect the debug logs. If you start working with Corsair support, they're going to ask you to do those things anyways. So you might want to go ahead and uh, you know turn on the debug logging. Just it's just over in the settings. Turn that on. You know make a couple of attempts to get this detected, and then save that log set. And you could hand that off to Corsair. You can go digging through there because there are some logs I can usually detect where it found the device. But you know you might get some useful error out of that to, to kind of help you along. So I want to touch briefly on the reset switch on these controllers. Each of the controllers has one. They all work the same way with the exception of the Commander Pro, which I'll talk about separately in just a second. Now, this is a very limited use, but in order to use this, the idea is a shutdown IQ and then disconnect the SATA power connection. And then while you're holding the reset switch with a paperclip, plug the power back in. 
Now this doesn't actually reset it. What it actually does is it's going to expose this drive location to you called CRP disabled. And you're gonna see that it has an existing firmware image here. The idea being is, is that Corsair could give you a new firmware image and you could replace this file here with the new one and then go ahead and uh, power cycle it and it would come up on the new image. Now, I would maybe do this as a test on a controller that was not working and see if it has any uh, you know, benefits to you. Uh, but messing around with this, I wasn't really able to get it to do much and I can't find these firmware images anywhere. So the Commander Pro is the exception to this. It's the same procedure. Hold the reset uh, switch down and then when you're plugging in power and let the light blink, that resets it. The difference being is that then when you go into IQ, it's reset it to an old firmware version. And then IQ is asking you to update it. It says it has a generic uh, firmware on it. So this seems to be a little bit more useful and definitely for the Commander Pro, this is a step I would try if you couldn't get it detected. I think I would try it on all of them, but uh, I think it's of limited use on the others, but be aware of that procedure. If anybody knows anything more about this procedure, or any of the benefits, please let me know. Um, I'd like to know more. All right, so if after all of that, you're still unable to get this to work, you know, you've stripped the motherboard down, you've tried every connection you can, uh, you, this is the only controller you've got, you've removed any old software, things like that, maybe you've even reinstalled Windows and it's still not working, uh, you're really gonna be forced into, you need to try another controller uh, to make sure that the controller you have is not broke. If you've already done that, uh, you need to take that controller somewhere else and have them plug it in to see if it actually works. If the controller is good, but you can't get it to work on your setup, no matter what you do, you know, perhaps you've got some other hardware problem uh, going on here. There's probably other things you can try, but uh, you know, it's just going to be a process of elimination of just trying different hardware components. And, you know, I mean, obviously if the controller works somewhere else, maybe you've got a motherboard problem, a power supply problem, things like that. Stuff, at, at that point, it starts getting more difficult to troubleshoot. You know, you've got to really start looking at some of the back end components, which can be expensive to start guessing with. I think for the majority of people, what we've discussed here today is going to get this fixed. I don't even think you need to go to these more advanced troubleshooting procedures for most problems. I think most problems, you know, reseat, reinstall, of IQ, things like that, you know, undo some changes you did. I think that's gonna get the vast majority of problems out there. You know, for the remainder of you that have to go down some of these crazier steps, you know, stripping it all down, maybe trying Wireshark or some, you know, USB packet captures, things like that to try to see what's going on. Or worse, you run into motherboard issues, power supply problems, things that are really difficult. Um, you know, to just be a process of elimination. But uh, I hope that helps you out. This is not the first video I'll make on this. If you will, in the comments below, let me know what your results are. What problems are have you encountered You know, if it's not being detected? What did you inevitably do? Even if that's up to and including, I just told Corsair to go away and I put something else in there. I would like to know that. Um, you know, I'm not affiliated with Corsair at all, but uh, if, if a problem is pushing you into you don't wanna use the product anymore, that's helpful to know. That's a good review. So I will do another video if your controller is detected, but the fans are not working right, or if there's other little goofy things. You know, a lot of the problems I see have less to do with the controller being detected and more with just the way the fans and stuff are working and or not working and so on and so forth. All right, so that is going to do it for today. I really hope that helps you out and get your devices working. Uh, again, let me know in the comments below what you think, what your experiences are with Corsair, what your problems are, and what the solutions are because I'll kind of compile those and I'll do another video of those things in the future. Uh, you know, if we're finding there's things that are working for people that I didn't put in this video, because as I mentioned earlier, there's a wide range of problems you could potentially encounter and it's just really difficult to go over one single video for them. But anyways, wanted to get people started on some ways you could try to uh, alleviate this issue. Anyways, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.